we hope the day never comes but seeing these guns firing in anger would be a sight to behold as evidenced by the tests you just saw while these guns are not in firing mode while on display at the Def Expo 2022 they are still every bit as impressive the 155 mm 52 caliber advanced towed artillery gun system or ATAGS which the DRDO is developing in partnership with the Tata and Kalyani groups has become an indigenization milestone. Now, the DRDO has produced an offshoot of the ATACs called the Mounted Gun System or MGS. The new weapon system is a prominent part of the India Pavilion and the DRDO display, which is the Def Expo 22's centerpiece, owing to the Atmanirbhar Bharat emphasis. The mounted gun system is made up of the ATAGS gun mounted onto a wheeled tractor from where it can be fired without lengthy preparations. Bringing the MGS into action takes just 80 seconds, leaving the enemy with little time to react. Bringing it out of action also takes 85 seconds, a godsend when the enemy brings down counter fire. The Indian Army's artillery plan calls for the purchase of 814 MGSs and the DRDO is confident about the superiority of its system because of its high accuracy and performance in desert and high altitude areas. The next example of successful indigenization is the DRDO developed Wheeled Armored Platform or WAP. It will be the basis for a family of mobile, protected, multi-purpose vehicles. They will also be able to serve as command posts or conduct reconnaissance, even in chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear battlefields. The amphibious and highly mobile 8 into 8 wheeled vehicle will be armed with a 30mm cannon and an upgraded Made in India sighting system. Private player Larson and Tubro is working with DRDO as a design come production partner for this project. So the big difference in the making of weapon systems now in India is that the DRDO is making these multi-purpose weapon systems that uh, can be used by the military for one task or the other. Uh, so the, the army is given many more options uh, and that's much better than buying a weapon system from abroad and then not being able to use it for any other purpose other than the one for which it was sold. Another made in India weapon system that may be headed for success is DRDO's 25-ton light tank meant for mountain border areas, jungles, narrow roads and bridges. The 2020 Chinese encroachment across the line of actual control galvanized the DRDO into resuming work on the tank under Project Zorabar, named after the legendary Sikh general who took his armies deep into Tibet. By November 2024, the DRDO is scheduled to finish trials and begin delivery to the army. The expo has more than 1300 exhibitors from the Indian defense industry, along with some joint ventures with foreign original equipment manufacturers. More than a hundred startups are also making their presence felt. PM Modi said that the expo would also see the signing of more than 400 memoranda of understanding, a record. The data too supports that progress has been made in indigenization. A business standard analysis of defense capital allocations in the union budgets shows that spending, after adjusting for inflation, has grown at a compounded rate of around 7% between FY12 and FY23, what shows a discernible shift towards indigenization is that while domestic rupee denominated spending has grown at 8.2% a year on average over the 11 year period, imports have grown at just 1.2%. In the base year of FY12, India imported $5.7 billion worth of defense equipment. In 2022-23, it intends to import $6.5 billion. It does appear that the efforts to indigenize are slowly making an impact. But while a certain measure of success has been achieved in developing key weapons platforms, crucial gaps still remain. Experts believe that developing indigenous aero engines is a strategic necessity given the proliferation of unmanned aerial vehicles and low-cost cruise missiles and the restrictions placed by foreign governments on the export of their engines and components. Indigenizing gas turbine engines can save the Ministry of Defense 3 trillion rupees in the next 20 years. But due to a trust deficit and the absence of inclusive policies, for involving qualified and globally certified private players, 
aero engine research and development remains a monopoly of the public sector. Further, the lack of testing infrastructure in India, for instance, caused a delay of six years in the development of the Kaveri engine that was originally meant for the Tejas light combat aircraft. The engine was, however, deemed unfit for Tejas as it could not attain the peak thrust required for the fighter jet during flight testing in Russia. At present, India continues to search for foreign partners to co-develop heavier combat jet engines. Also, be it artillery guns or India's ambitious stealth combat aircraft, there's one last crucial factor that could make or break these projects. So the design and development of many of these made in India systems is more or less complete uh, and they have to now go into production. And how well the DRDO interfaces with the private industry or the DTSUs that built these weapon platforms will determine the success and failure or how they have been received by the military. At DEF Expo 2022, Prime Minister Narendra Modi set a target of 40,000 crore rupees in annual defence exports representing a near threefold jump from 13,000 crore rupees in FY22. While deals like this year's sale of Brahmos missiles to the Philippines stand out as examples of India's success in this regard, meeting the PM's ambitious goals will require a quantum leap in India's weapons-making capabilities. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.